Hi everyone, welcome back to another tutorial video. This video I will show you how to build a structure nails, where to find the apexes and how to build the apex with the dipping powder. The first thing that I want to do is push back, you know, all my client uh, cuticles. Okay. Uh, after I push them back, there is a bit that I use to remove some of the skin that were laying around the side, the side wall, the cuticle area here. Uh, this is a diamond bit um, from Chisel. Okay, the next thing that I want to do is I am using a diamond square. This diamond square bit here is to replace the sanding band. I do not use any sanding band at all. I'm just going to use this because this here, what it does is it's really, really fine and it's small enough to go into the side wall around the cuticle area and it will be able to roughen up the nail surface. What it does is to replace the sanding band. You don't have to worry about lifting because it will make it rough enough for the nail dipping powder to bond. What I have is a super deep base. This one here I use them for many purpose. I will use it to glue the nails on and you see I prepare, I have the two nails, you know, laying aside already measure, so I don't have to do any measurement. Another thing about when you put the tips on, there is a, a trick that I always like to look, I always like to measure. Actually, I measure from the uh, here all the way down, and here all the way down. It's the nail, the tip is always kind of follow, make, you that you, make sure that you follow the whole entire finger not just the nail bed area by itself. So I would cut it shorter. You know, I'll do, I measure, I measure, you know, from length to length to, you know, normally if you do all five nails and you want to make sure the three nails are almost like identical with each other, make sure they're all the same length, same shape, same size, because, you know, that's what the whole entire set will be. I'm going to go ahead and do what you call it a almond shape okay i'll file into a coffin nail first because coffin i think one of the most hardest nail to do is the coffin shape nail uh, a lot of people try to do coffin but it actually doesn't turn out to be a coffin it's you know it's, it's, it's either too wide or it's too fat here on the two sides here i just file them just like a just like a saw i file back back and forth straight i i'm not trying to be creative like moving up like or moving around so many times just like one direction, one way. After I, I got it to the shape, to the length that I wanted. For, and then what I do, I tilt right here for, for, for a almond shape. What I do, I go like this underneath and I go like this underneath, okay? Make sure they come out nice and even. So, coffin shape is hard. Almond shape is a little bit more work. You have to form them into a coffin before you can be able to form them into almond. I will lay this flat on the bottom here. Make sure that this two nail match or kind of like a twin to each other, okay? This here from Chizo too, this is here is a safety bit. This one here, if you use this bit to, um, to remove uh, the nail, what I'll do, because this is a natural nail and, and a, a tip, uh, they, when you put the tips on, there's always kind of a, a, a gap in between there. What you want to do is you want to flush them before you start to do any dipping. If you don't flush them, when you dip them, uh, you will create a, like a very wavy uh, tech, way, way we look at it. So you don't want that wavy to be in there and then you start to file it later because it's a lot of work after you finish all dipping. So what I like to do is I like to file them first before I would do any application for uh, for the dipping. Okay, now first thing first, um, remove dust, okay. Uh, go ahead and if, if I'm trying to show you guys here, if you look from this point right here coming down, it's going down and there's always a loop here. You want to go ahead and try to fill up that gap. This is my clear powder. You can either use clear or natural. What I do, I place a very thin layer of the glue on that certain area only and I dip into the powder, remove, 
and I'll I'll get into another one here. Okay, I dip them to that powder and remove, okay? And then you do that to all five now. When you return, go ahead and, and remove the dust. As you can see, this right here did not require an activator to dry. So it's gonna dry by itself. As you can see on this video, you will see what you see what I mean. Now, the next thing that I wanna do, building a structure, I am placing a very thin layer of the deep glue let's say about 60% of the whole entire nail. Make sure you want to do them nice and thin. And then I dip them into the powder, take it out, clean them, go back again. Make sure you apply them very nice and thin. The key to dipping is you want to make sure they are nice and thin and, and then they are all even. Okay, now clean out again. I'm moving up to about maybe 80%, okay? And what I would do, I would dip that into the clear powder again and continue going to the next nail. I would do the same, okay? 80%, nicely, make sure that you do them evenly and thin, okay? That's what you wanted to do. So go ahead and take a look on the side you want to make sure are they good enough, are they thick enough for this type, type of length nails. Make sure that the structure is going there. Make sure that you have your apex where the high point is right here. Make sure they are staying in the same place. If you see they are, they are not thick enough and you want to go ahead and try to do one more coat, okay? If you think that will thick enough, then you go ahead and, and start filing down so you can start dipping the color in. But I think that I need another coat. I want to make sure that I build my structure right. I want to make sure that they are thick enough so my my client could be able to go two to three weeks without having a breaking nail. You guys know, know how it is when, when you're busy and your client come in and your nail is broken. Yeah, fix them. Sometimes you don't have time to fix them. So you want to prevent all that before that, you know, before that gonna happen. I'm finished with my dipping here now for the structure. I'm waiting for my nail to dry. I, I like to pinch the two side in because I am creating a contours. I'm creating a C-curve. In the process of the glue drying, when you hold it into the certain time, and when it dry, it will keep that C-curve for you, and it make sure your nail is nice and uh, narrow. I would go and I start filing her nail. I have not used any activator on them. Uh, they will dry by itself. So, you can see, I'm just filing, easy. I would run my file, or this two size, okay, and the very top, going down, and I'm gonna run it this two side here. My my focus is to narrow this nail in, so when I dip them, they look more not natural, okay. Now I'm filing the very top here. Make sure that you file them all nice and even, going around. Uh, with the very slow RPM, I will say about 5,000 RPM. You don't want to put too much speed on to the nails on the drill because um, the dipping here is, is nice and thin, it's not thick. So you don't need uh, a lot of force to remove the powder. Because plus the, uh, the deep powder are very nice and soft. I mean, they, they are not at all as acrylic is, you know. But all powder are dual. All powder, you can use them with monomer. You could use it with monomer, and you could use it with uh, with the dip system too. So this is a dual, it's a dual product, um, you know, in the market right now. Okay. You could see from cuticle growing out, you see where the stress area is, where the breaking point. You could see that's the highest point of the nail right now. You could see right there, that's the highest point. So I, I said, all I, I did everything is the purpose is to build to build up that, that structure. But which is now I did pretty well building that. Now I'm just gonna file my side uh, down evenly. Make sure I don't want to lose the shape that I have it on earlier uh, before I start dipping again. Okay. Now I, I finished the prepping. Now my nail are ready to dip into the powder now. So you can see this is a new color that we are, are launching in about a week or so. So the color that I have here is more like an aqua color. You can see, I will be release them pretty soon. So you guys go ahead and follow the way that I'm gonna dip now. I will go in, 
apply them nice and even. Make sure you get all the way to the cuticle. Just keep going back and forth. Keep going back and forth quite a few times. Okay, back and forth. And then what you do, you dip them into the jar. The way that I dip, if I go in, I do not push that in because when you push that in like this, you could create a uh, very wavy uh, look. So when I, when I turn it like this, I dip it in, I, I actually press the product into the nail bed and it helps you stay on. Okay, now I'm going to apply them very nice and even. Make sure that you go back and forth, apply it again, dip it in, take it out, okay, remove. So you do that to all five nails and then when you come back, you can go ahead and, you know, take the brush and remove the, uh, the very top off. Let's try it one more time. Okay, again. Get it really close to the cuticle. Make sure that you apply them nice and even all over. Okay, guys. Here we go again. I'm going to dip that in just like how I just did the first one. I hold it for a few seconds. I let the, the glue grab the powder. So the, that, that's, you know, that's how you want to build the thickness. You hold it in there for a few seconds. I con continue into the second nails. Okay, make sure that you apply some nice and even. Back and forth. Do it like that so they will, the, the powder will grab into, okay. You hold them for three seconds before you release it out. Okay, now I shake it out. So I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna kinda clean them out and brush it out and see how that look now. I could see, kinda see through here. So that means it's not thick enough to hold this entire length like this. So I apply one more coat, okay? So three coats, I would think that would be perfect for the three. Now okay, here we go again. I'm gonna apply that again, nice and even, close to the cuticle. But you don't want to get too much around the cuticle. You don't want that cuticle to be thick. You want it to be nice and thin. So you hold them for a few seconds. You take it out, shake them. Okay, going back to these nails again. Same way. Go back and forth. Okay, apply some nice and even. Okay, here we go. You go in. You hold it for a few seconds and you release it out. So I think um, my nail is thick enough now. So I'm just gonna head and close this in so I don't get dirt into the, my powder. Okay, just hold that, leave it there. Now that I will go ahead and kind of, now you could see right there around the cuticle, you could see my cuticle uh, just, just don't have a lot of powder around the cuticle. So I have a, like three layer, but the way that I apply it is so thin. You don't see the powder I build up around the cuticle area. So now, just go ahead and I finish with this deep powder now. So I'm gonna close it um, before I spill them. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and file them. As you can see, I do not use any activator at all. All powder plus the, the super base do not require activator. They will, they will dry by itself and, and they, will, they will stay dry and they will stay very, very strong, okay? See, I'm gonna start filing to the coffin shape that I, I mean the almond shape that I want it to be. Go continue to the next nail. Uh, what I will show you guys uh, later on is um, you have an option um, to uh, put on the top. Uh, there's clients that do not want to put their hand in the light no matter what you try to tell them, then you want to use this for the top. So when you're gonna use the base again for the top, I will show you how to do that. Um, and if you have a client that want to put in, you know, they don't mind about putting to the lamp, then I'm gonna show you how to put on the base and the top before you finishing. So as you can see, I am using the same bit that I used earlier to prep her nail. I like to push the cuticle out. When I push her cuticle back, they will release between the collar and the nail bed that will stick to, it, to each other. You know, sometimes you run the, the drill in there, you might cut them. So you push that out, okay? Now, let's say you run the RPM about maybe six to seven, that's 
thousand RPM very nicely, very softly. You just like go around, around the cuticle area. Okay. With this, you don't have to worry about removing the uh, powder because we designed this only for dipping powder. Okay. So you you don't want to use this on acrylic at all because they will dull it out faster. Uh, as you can see, um, I spent time to um, build the structure earlier, so now I don't have to do, do a lot of fouling. All I do is just make sure that I go around, I clean up my cuticle, and then I you know just finish my top. So as as you can see, that's all I have to do. Same thing here on this nail. Okay. Just do it nice and easy. Go around the cuticle. Okay. You can see I was gonna rub, go with it easy. You can see there is a little bit build up on this side here. You wanna go ahead and take care of that. Okay, and then before you started to decide to go file them all now. Okay. Make sure that you check, make sure that there, there is enough thickness to hold this length. Uh, otherwise, they will break off pretty easy, um, especially when you have clients that will be rough with their nails and they have this length to come off easily. Okay, here we go. So I'll file. Adjusting my shape. And you can see I'm a little bit uh, picky myself. You know, I, I always, I'm a perfectionist, so I always make sure that the nails are all the same, the lengths are all the same, the shape are all the same before I let my client walk out of my shop. So, yeah, I, I think that's how you build clientele anyway, perfection. Okay, now, what you wanna do is buff, okay? I buff everything down. I do not scratch my nail. I go from here, go here, I go down like this. Okay, guys, down, top. You can go here, like that, and you can go down. That's how you go down to all this way, okay? So I'm gonna go here again. I'm gonna start buffing this nail, okay? Okay, down, okay? Make sure that you clean the bottom. Okay, now you have finished the nails. Okay, now let's go back to the, I started earlier. For those clients that do not want to put their uh, hand into the lamb, but they still want to use the top, this is a super base that I have earlier. The earlier I used at the base, now I use at the top. But for me to be, to be able to use at the top, I have to use an activator now. Because if I don't use an activator, they won't dry at the top. So here we go. After I apply the activator, I don't send my client to wash their hand yet until later. I do it up to all 10 nails. And I will come back, I will take a piece of paper like this, I will clean up like the top. This way, if you do it this way, you will not harden the brush right here. If you don't clean them out, the brush will get really hard and, and, and then you can't work with them more, you gotta throw it away. So now, after I do that to all five nails, I'll come back and then and here we go, I apply them nice and thin okay okay I do that to all five nails clean them out do that to all five nails and when you come back you can see after you come back with five nails you can see the surface is starting to get really dull now because that means the activator is working in it's drying my glue you don't want it to apply it right away because if what happened if you apply the second coat so fast the activator is still strong and it will grab this in and it would dry it out so fast and it doesn't get shiny. So the timing for the second coat, you wanna make sure that you do the all five nails come back, maybe you, you leave it about 30 seconds, maybe another minute or so before you apply the second coat. Okay, so I'm waiting, I'm waiting to, to, uh, to apply my second coat on. Okay, so same thing if I apply my second coat, nice and thin guy. Make sure that you seal the edge with, um, so it doesn't chip or, or, or peel off and you can just go ahead and close that in. That will help. So now you will see uh, after three to five minutes, this will dry and it will stay shiny just like this without uh, putting it into the lamp. And for those 
that don't mind the gel. I like to put the gel on because the gel looks shinier and they last longer than just the top by itself. In order for me to put the gel on, I have to have base. Without having a base, they will peel or chip off the next day. You don't have to put them thick, you know, just nice and thin. This gel diamond base here are great to put the diamonds on. So let's say my client decided to have some fun, so she wanted to apply some diamond. So what I do, I put some diamond on here, okay? No matter how big or how small the diamond is, it doesn't matter. The glue will hold until they come back the next time. One thing I like to put the glue with the gel is because I could be able to put the diamonds on without worry about, you know, how it dries so fast. Put it and I could be able to adjust to the way that I wanted to adjust. And then you see, um, and then I just need to put tops around them. Here we go. Just gonna add another one here. One more to the very last. Okay, so that's how you want it. And you know, even though however you want to apply it, up to you. And what you want to do is let it cure for 30 seconds underneath the lamp. Now, after you let it in for 30 seconds, you would take it out and then you want to apply this around the stone. You don't want to get over the stone because you got to doll them out. So make sure that you just want to go around it. Okay, just like this. Don't want to be too much. This is a non-cleansing top coat. You just go ahead and, and send your client out, collect their money. You could see how I use my finger to, to clean the size because what happened is sometimes the gel would kind of run, run around and kind of ruin your shape again. So you want to go ahead, put the hand in there for 60 seconds. With this here, you need a minimum 60 seconds to cure. But if you want to make sure that they are more shiny, you want to do it for 90 seconds. So 90 seconds, that's my recommendation to cure uh, the top gel. And um, this is a non-yellow top gel too. As you can see, if it's non-yellow, you can see kind of the kind of purple is tone that they have in there. That's just the UV ray that they're trying to protect the nail from turning yellow. If you're gonna do some uh, pink and white and you don't want that pink white to turn yellow, I think this one is great for. Okay, When it's done, you can take them out. Now you can see this is done. This is a non-cleansing, and you can see this one here is a dipping. You can compare the shiny between the gel and the non-gel, and the non-gel, you can see it's, st it's still shiny, but it's not as shiny as the gel does. But in the end, this one right here, you can see only a few minutes and they dry already. Well, I hope this video will help you guys, and um, you guys make sure you just subscribe my video, and I, I appreciate it, and I thanks for watching the videos, and if you have any question, you can go into my either my Facebook David Huang or you can go to Instagram. It call it Chizo Nail Art. If you guys have any question at all, go ahead and text me through there from the Instagram. Thank you everyone for watching and have a nice day.